Hello and welcome to another Python programming lesson. We're up to lesson 12, which is going to be about reading in text files. So how do we open a text file? Well, this is the first part of the code we need. The kind of key word that we require is open. So open, and then in your speech marks, you're going to have the full name of the file and the file extension comma and then we're going to open it in read mode which is r so r for read that means we're going to read it in but we're not going to write it or change it or edit it in some way and once we've done all that we can take that file object and we can save it as a variable here so i open it give it the name and the file extension tell it which mode I want to write it, I want to open it in, which is the read mode, and then we're going to store it here as my file. Again, you don't have to use my file, you can use any name you want, that's just the one that I've selected. Please note, this will work if the Python file and the text file are both in the same folder. If the text file is in a different folder from the Python program, then you need to give the full path. You need to say where to find it. So which directories are in, which folders are in, you need to kind of give the path here, okay? If the Python cannot find the file requested, it'll give you an error message that looks something like this. If that happens, then either the path is incorrect, or the file name has been misspelt, or the file extension is incorrect, or the file has been deleted or moved. So please check all these before you start panicking about your code, because nine times out of 10 a student asks me for a problem with their text file programs, it's usually one of these. So after opening a file, and then doing whatever we need to do with it, we should always close the file using the dot close method. So you can see that I've got that here, I've just got myfile.close. Always make sure you explicitly close each open file once its job is done. And there's some good reasons for this. There's usually an upper limit to the number of files a program can open at once. Each open file consumes some main memory for the data structures associated with it, so you'll start using up lots of memory. And open files always stand a chance of corruption and data loss. And from your point of view, it's marks in the exam. Usually we look at the mark schemes in GCSE programming exams. Opening the file correctly will get you one mark. Closing the file at the end will get you one mark. So if this is a programming problems worth three or four marks, you can get two marks just from opening and closing the file, even if you don't do anything else. So open it correctly, close it correctly, you'll pick up some nice easy marks. Before we can display the text, there are some extra steps that we have to do. We can't just print out a file object. So if I say my file equals open files.txt read mode, print my file, my file.close, seems great, but this is what I'm going to get displayed in my editor window here, yeah? Because it's trying to print out a file object and it doesn't know how to do that. You've got to give it some more instructions before you can display the contents. So an easy way to do that is just iterate through the file object using a for loop. So my file equals open file slash files dot txt r for read mode. Then I say for line in my file print line my file dot close. And all this is doing is saying go through that file line by line from the start to the end. And then I can print them out one at a time and that'll give me this output here. However, it's maybe not quite how I want to display it because I've got these extra blank lines in here that have been added. Why is that? Well, we have these blank lines because in our text file, each line already ends with a new line character, that kind of slash N here. So you often can't see that, it's kind of hidden symbol in your text editor, but this is basically how every line of your program ends. So every line of your text file ends. You've got this new line character. And then when we print in Python, Python, Python automatically takes a new line. 
So basically, it's like having two new lines, a new line here and a new line here. A new line here and a new line here. So it's adding all these extra new lines in. So we have these empty blank lines after every print statement. So one way to get rid of this is to use the end parameter of the print statement. By default, this is usually the new line character, but we can overwrite that with something else. So in this line here, I've decided that I'm going to replace that end parameter with nothing. So basically, just ignore it. Don't, have, don't end at a new line, don't have that extra new line character in there. So now when I use this, end equals empty string, I get all the lines put together nicely without that extra blank line. So it looks a lot neater. Another way of doing that is to strip out the new line characters, and that's something we might look at in a future lesson. There are three additional functions in Python that you need to know to make sure you kind of know all the different ways of reading in text files. We've got dot .read, which takes all the text in and stores it as one big string. We've got dot .readline, which reads one line of text at a time as a string. And dot .readlines, plural, which takes every line of text and stores it as a one-dimensional list. So let's look at these all one at a time. Have a look at read. So remember, read takes everything in as a text file and stores it at once as a string. So again, I've got my my file open, and then here I've said my file dot read. So read everything in and then store it as a string under all text. And then when I print all text, it just prints everything out. So it's just one big text string. All the new line characters are there, stored as all text. We can also add a number into the brackets after dot .read to control how many characters we take. So in this case, I've said text equals my file dot .read, and I've said 11. So it'll display the first 11 characters, including the spaces. Okay, so maybe you just want to take a few of the characters from your text string. That's how you do it. Read line takes it one line at a time, takes that line and stores it as a string. So here I've said one line equals my file dot read line, print one line, and you can see here it's just giving me that first line of text, nothing else. Okay, no, it's also going to have that new line character at the end there, so you're going to end up with this kind of empty blank line that you can remove using the end parameter if you want. Each time we use read line, Python takes the next line in turn. It kind of remembers where you were and it always takes the next line. So if you use dot read line twice, it won't just take the first line twice, it'll take the first line and the second line. So you can see that in this example here. Uh, I take one line here using dot read line, I print it, I then take the next line using read line, and then I print it again. But this time, first of all, I get the first line, and then the next time I use the print, I get the second line, because it kind of remembers where it is and takes the next line each time. Again, if you want to kind of not have these kind of empty blank lines at the end, just use the end parameter like we did in the earlier example. We can control how many lines we take by using a simple loop. So here I open up my text file, I set the counter to one, while counter less than three, e.g. counter equals one, counter equals two, take in a line, print it, and add one to the counter. So this will take the first two lines and display them in a loop. If I want to take more lines, I can just change this parameter here. Read lines takes your file, takes each line from the file, and then stores that in a one-dimensional list. So if you look at the example here, I'm using read lines in this example, and I'm storing it as all lines. All lines isn't just going to be a string of text. All lines is going to be a list, an array. So when I print it out, I get this kind of answer here displayed. You can see it's an array because I've got those square brackets and I've got the 
speech marks around everything. It's got the New Line characters there, etc. So often you probably want to manipulate it a bit further. But this can be very useful because essentially it's a one-dimensional list and each line is just one row in your list. So if you look at the next example, I can access each line from my text file in the same way I would access any element from a list. So in this example, if we just take a look here at these two lines, I say print all lines 0 and then print all lines 1 in the square brackets. So that means takes the first line, take the second line. So obviously this would be 0 in our array and this would be 1. So it takes the first line and the second line. I can print any line out just by giving it the index position of the element in the square brackets, just like we do when we take information from any list. Again, if you want to get rid of those new line characters, you need to strip it off in some way. Okay, guys, that's all I'm going to go through on reading files. Lots of different ways you can read the data from a file. Have a look back through those. Make sure you're familiar with all the different methods. Usually it's up to you which method you use, but occasionally one method will kind of stand out as being more appropriate to solve one particular text problem. In the future lessons, I'm going to look at writing files and also appending to files as well. Good luck with your studies. Enjoy the rest of your day.